Hey you, so this is an antenna, and it is the very first antenna that I've ever built. Um, right now it's the only antenna that I've built, but I do plan to do more because I had a lot of fun doing this. And it was a little bit of a test to see if I can use some of the knowledge that you, that you, you know, the things that you're tested on to actually get your ham license, if you can just put that into practice and, um, and actually have some success with it. And it turns out you can. Um, so for the beginner, this is a, a really fun project just to do and kind of, you know, experience the magic of radio. Um, for more advanced people, um, I would not recommend pulling this. And I think <laughs> if you already know, if you're watching this for entertainment, you already know some of the problems with this. But this is a fun ex uh, experiment and, um, and we'll talk about more of that in the end. Um, the, it's pretty cheap to make. Um, I'll talk about the cost at the end as well, but just to get it out of the way, it's about $40 if you have to buy everything. If you have to buy the PVC and the SO239 and the wire and everything, it's about $40 um, in total materials. Now, the actual part of that that you consume, because you're not going to use all of the, you know, you buy a pack of, two, of SO239s and you're only going to use a little bit of the wire out of the whole spool. You know, so taking all that into account, it's closer to, to $12, and we'll do a cost breakdown at the end, um, and it'll be, it'll be very fair. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what this actually is. So this is a dipole antenna, and it's about as simple as you can possibly make a dipole antenna, um, or any antenna for that matter. Um, there's a local repeater in my area. It's a WZ5A, and it... Uh, I, I wanted to make an antenna that I could specifically hit that repeater, so that way I knew I could test something that I can hit with my handheld. Um, it's, it's something I could test because I know the person who operates the, the repeater, so um, we could test it together and everything else. So I, I wanted to make it specifically for that frequency, and also knowing that I wasn't going to get a lot of bandwidth out of kind of a, a very cheap DIY project like this. So I made it specifically for his frequency, and that was the only thing I was concerned with. So it's 442.7 megahertz is the frequency I aimed for. So what I did here is I divided 300, which is the speed of light, um, <laughs> with a bunch of zeros truncated. But 300 divided by 442.7 gives you 0.677, which you might already recognize. Um, this is in metric, so that's close to 70 centimeters. That's a 70 centimeter band. But more accurately, it's 0.677 uh, meters. So 67.7 centimeters, if you prefer. So I took 0 0.677, um, divided that in half, because this is a half wave dipole, and that gives me 34 centimeters. So I knew I needed 34 total centimeters of wire. But since this is, uh, so I have to do this in two parts, so you cut that in half, and each part here is 17 centimeters. So that's what I went ahead and cut, 17, two pieces of 17 centimeter wire. Then I bought a SO239 connector. Sometimes these are called HF connectors. This is the chassis mount one. Um, if you look on Amazon, I might put, I'll try to put links to everything in the bottom so you can do this if, yourself if you want to. Um, again, I'm not recommending to actually make this to use, especially in a case of an emergency or anything like that. But um, th this is not a practical antenna, but it is a fun hobby antenna. Um, but anyway, SO239 connector with the chassis mount. Uh, I bought these off of Amazon. They come out to about two bucks a piece. Um, so I cut the two pieces of wire, stripped off the ends, and then on the bottom here, I just soldered them, and I did a very hack and slash kind of job soldering the two together. One goes to the center pin, and one goes to the chassis. And so on your uh, PL259, um, that's going to be the same thing. That's going to be the inside pin and the sleeve is what those two things actually connect to. So it really was as simple as that. And you can see I didn't do a very pretty job. I didn't intend to. Um, that just literally wrapped it around the chassis here, put a big glob of solder on, put this into that pin there, put a big glob of solder on that as well. Um, in terms of the actual structure of the thing, um, there's, it's a half inch PVC. This is Schedule 4D PVC that I got at Home Depot. I bought a 10, feet, 10 foot um, length of it, and um, I cut off uh, whatever this is. I guess it's about 18 inches. Um, <laughs> he says, looking at the fact that it's on a ruler, yeah, it's about 18 inches, um, 
and I have a T connector in the middle and I put some caps at the end. I'll put that, make sure it's in frame. I just have some caps at the end for just a small amount of weatherproofing and to keep like wasps from building a nest in there or something like that. Um, obviously this goes at the end of the other part of the pole uh, of the rest of the PVC, which is outside, but um, you know, you can find some way to attach this. It doesn't really have to be particularly high off the ground just to use it. In fact, when I used this for the first time, I just held it in my hand. I just, uh, I think I just held it. I, I, put, I put it on a stick or something like that, and so I held it, so I wasn't actually touching the electronics. You don't want to do that um, if you can avoid it, but um, the point is you don't have to mount this very high because that's, this is a hobby antenna. And then, um, so yeah, once I soldered it up to the SO239, and I literally just um, electrically taped it, used some electrical tape and, and taped it to the side here. Kind of tried to make it as straight as I could in both directions, and, and that's that. As soon as I made the antenna, I um, plugged it into my radio and turned it on, and I happened to have it, my radio turned to a, I'm using a Baofeng uh, handheld radio, and um, I already ha happened to have it tuned to another repeater. It's actually in Mississippi. It's about 28 miles away. And the second I turned it on, I heard people talking, clear as day. Now, after their conversation, I tried to hit them back and couldn't. Now, they were on a, if I remember correctly, they're on a two meter um, frequency. So uh, now, you know, 70 centimeters and two meters have a harmonic relation with one another. So in terms of listening, you can actually listen to a lot of different stations with this, but in terms of transmitting, um, not so much. Um, it's, it's relatively narrow, and I haven't done any kind of stress testing in terms of like putting any significant power through it. Um, my Baofeng only goes up to 5 watts, so at least for a short conversation, this is perfectly fine uh, at 5 watts. I'm sure it could probably go higher, but I wouldn't want to test it. Because again, this is not really an antenna that you want to use. This is an antenna that you want to make just to experience the joy of radio and and, and kind of witness the magic of it. So, um, so yeah, that is literally it. If you've seen other videos online or you've read about, you know, just putting some wire up somehow, um, you know, they're right. You have to kind of do it yourself, I think, sometimes to, to really understand how simple it really is. I mean, it's obviously very complicated. The electronics and the physics of it is, is it's simply magic, but, um, and, but, you know, the fact that it works like they say it do, it, they say it does, is really, really cool. So, yeah, you just solder some wires together, put them on some kind of mast, and it works um, just fine. We'll go to some demonstrations now. Um, I film these on my phone, so please bear the, with the quality. But um, some demonstrations of the thing actually working. Um, I did some tests with my dad, and like I say, I, I hopped on the repeater. And... Um, and yeah, this, we'll, we'll watch the thing actually in action. I'll talk some more about it afterwards. Good afternoon. The time is 4 p.m. W-Z-5-A. K-5-E-D-H monitoring. Interesting, I didn't get the uh, courtesy tone that time. But I have been getting it, and this is attached to a little homemade dipole. See if I get it without the sun in the background. All right, so here we are. We're some distance away from the antenna. Um, I will put on the screen uh, how far away we are from the antenna, or wherever I post this video, I'll, I'll make sure to write that down as I after I calculate it. But right now, I'm pretty far away from the antenna got my dad on the other end and we're gonna make a call and see how we coming in this is the signal stick antenna two meter seven centimeter and the radio I'm using is the uh, UV 5x3 from Bitech. the one he is using is the GT 5r from Baofeng and like I say the antenna is the one that we made so here we go n5 KON K5 EDH how copy n5 KON here uh, you got a 5 9 on that You're real good I think if you're about where I think you're at, you're about three quarters of a mile from here. Copy that. I think um, at max distance I was probably closer to a mile, but we were starting to get some cutting out. And uh, yeah, we're back to where it's pretty much full strength. Over. Yeah, roger that. Uh, right there at Dave's is right at one mile from here. 
Roger that, that's where I was, and I was definitely, it was still copyable for sure, but uh, we were getting a little bit of cutting out, especially as I drove by, um, there's some traffic on the street and some houses, I think there was some RF interference, but yeah, this is perfectly serviceable, and uh, at almost a mile, so pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's very good, you sounded real good. Uh, through this whole thing, you cut out maybe twice, uh, twice, maybe three times, but I'm thinking it was twice, and with the exception of a little background static, Time. Yeah, that's great. Well, like I said, I just wanted to see if it worked at all. And the fact that not only does it work, but it's pretty serviceable, I think, is uh, it's pretty cool. So now I guess it's the, <laughs> the next part is to make some improvements and make it actually uh, something you'd want to use, not just can use. Over. Yeah, right that. Uh, yeah, I look forward to helping you out with that. N5 KON, K5 VDH. See you at the house. Clear. Clear. Yeah, so there we go. Um, almost a mile away from the house, and uh, he was coming through at about that signal strength. So pretty happy with that. Again, it's just a couple pieces of wire soldered up to an SL239 taped to a piece of PVC. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed the little demonstration of it working. It does indeed work. You can carry on a conversation locally. Um, you could tune this uh, to other frequencies if you wanted to. Now something I will say with that is I had this on an SWR meter and I don't have footage of that and it would be too hard to set up on myself uh, for reasons I'm about to explain. But I have tested the SWR on this because I didn't want to damage my radio. And um, I managed to get I managed to get an SWR of 1.1 to 1 on the frequency that I wanted at 442.7 megahertz. Um, I managed to actually get that at 1.1. But I will say this, if this moves at all, see how I'm bouncing it? <laughs> or if the, the wind blows and this thing jiggles at all, that SWR goes all over the place, which again is a testament to how it's, it's not a permanent antenna. I really want to make this clear. This is not a like, go build yourself a $10 antenna. It, this is a fun little hobby just for you to do and, and just to experience. It does work. I've had it up for a month and it still works. So um, you absolutely can use it, but it, it's not precise, it's not accurate, and it's not reliable. I would, I would say that. Um, if, if you touch it or move it really at all, the SWR jumps all over the place, and the actual, uh, the, 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 the usable frequency is all over the place. It's fine for listening. You can listen just fine to a lot of different frequencies, but in terms of transmitting, it can go in a moment, if with a breeze, it can go from... I'm coming through clear as a bell on the other end, uh, at the, again, on a repeater that's a few miles away, to very noisy, very staticky, static almost unusable. Um, so, so that's that. Okay, let's get into the price. And one little pet peeve that I have from other uh, videos, not that I'm calling anybody out, but one little pet peeve that I have is a lot of people, when they talk about the price of things, I feel like they're maybe a little bit disingenuous with how much this stuff actually costs. Because um, I don't think it's fair to just say, okay, well, this is $2, and I only used 17 centimeters of wire, so that's 30 cents, or whatever it is. Um, because, well, if you don't have the wire, then you got to buy a spool. And if you don't have these, you got to buy a pack of them. If you don't have the PVC, you got to buy 10 feet of it. So that's a little unfair. So I'm going to talk about the price of all these things together, if you're interested. And I'm going to try to be as fair as I can with how much this stuff actually costs me. Today is April Fool's Day, um, 2022. Not that this is a joke, <laughs> but this is just to give you some, you know, in the future if you're watching this, that's the, the reference point. I live in Louisiana. So these are Louisiana prices, April 2022. The wire, this is wire that I got from the DX Commander build. So this is actually some, some wire that's kind of specific for antennas. I would, not, I would not say to go out and buy this unless you already have some or or maybe trying to make this a much more robust system. If you're just trying to build this, if you're a kid or you're playing with, you know, you're having fun with your dad, or if you're just a hobbyist, you, you don't need this and this, this wire. Um, so the price that I got was some speaker wire, which you could use j just as fine. Um, literally, you can cut up a pair of headphones something like that and, and use it. Um, so that, I, I priced it for that. I'm not gonna price it on specialty antenna wire because I don't recommend using specialty antenna wire. But you can get a spool of, of of like 17 feet of wire priced it earlier for six dollars. Um, of that, the amount that we actually used here comes out to 40 cents if with that cost. 
The PVC, I bought a 10 foot, 10 foot piece of PVC. You may already have this, but 10 foot piece of JM Eagle Schedule 40, one half inch PVC. I should have mentioned that earlier in the build. This is half inch, all this is half inch stuff. The half inch uh, Schedule 40 PVC, 10 feet of it was $5.24 by today's price. Um, um, I'm considering that I used all of it because the parts that's not here on on screen I'm using for the mast. So even though I only cut up uh, 18 inches of it here, um, I do consider using the entire part, a uh, part of the cost here. The caps at the end here are 64 cents a piece at today's price. And of course there are two of them. The SO239 came in a pack uh, for $14 and there was five of them. So it's $14 for a pack of these things on Amazon. Um, you may already have yours, of course, and it's $2.80 for the actual consumable cost. I'm just going to be putting all this stuff on screen. A pack of electrical tape, if you don't have it, costs you about $2.40. Some of the stuff that I found online, I calculated that I used a foot for each one of these. I probably didn't, but I'm trying to be very conservative. So uh, what did I say? $2.40 for the actual roll of tape, $0.38 cents for the pieces that I put up here. Um, a, roll, a solder is actually kind of expensive. Again, you may already have some, hope you do. It's what I found was 1047 for a thing of solder, which seems very high. I haven't bought it in a while. I've been using the same roll for a long time. Um, 1047, I said, what if you used about 10% of it for these two things, which again is ridiculous in terms of the estimation. So let's just calculate about a buck for that. So it's about a dollar in solder. But again, these are high. I'm trying to go high. Um, the T, I forgot about the T. The T itself is 75 cents. So if you had to buy everything, if you had to buy a pack of these, a roll of wire, a roll of tape, the PVC, a spool of solder, um, I'm not calculating the tools. You know, obviously you might have to have a saw to cut the PVC with, you'll have to have a soldering iron. You know, you might already have those, you might not, you can borrow those if you want to. Um, if you calculate all of that, it comes out to $40.14 if you had to buy everything. The actual consumable portion of that is $11.85, and the lion's share of that is the PVC and the connectors. Um, next to that is the SO239. The consumable portion of the wire, 17 centimeters of wire, and a little bit of tape, and a little bit of solder is, is nearly negligible. But I want to be very honest about how much this actually costs, because I, I always feel like, you know, some kid's are going to watch these videos, and they're going to say, hey, Dad, can I have 12 bucks to go buy an antenna? And they're going to ask their mom and their dad for 10 bucks or 12 bucks to go buy an antenna, and then they're going to be shocked when it actually costs $50 because they don't have the electrical tape, and they don't have a spool of wire, and they don't have PVC. Um, now, you can get crafty, and you can hang this up on a stick if you wanted to, and completely cut out the cost of that. Um, you can use twine or rope or shoelace to tie these things up here. You know, you get crafty, and you can get this cost way down, but I'm trying to give you a nice, big, conservative estimate of how much this stuff would actually cost to make. It's about 12 bucks. I wish I could put the title of the video, how to make a $12 antenna, <laughs> but I just think that it's disingenuous, so I'm not gonna do it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, this is a fun project to build, and I'm gonna do more of these and make it a little bit more robust. I'm going to put a, I have a 3D printer. I'm gonna 3D print like an enclosure for this. And right now, I should mention, this, the solder connections here, solder is not a good mechanical connection um, at all. And it's not recommended to use it as a mechanical connection. So um, in the future, I'm going to redo this project and just and robustify all of it, where I'm going to build like an enclosure for the SO239. I'm going to put in some like tension reducing loops in the wire to, to make all of this much more robust and much more secure and, uh, and do it again. And uh, I might make a vertical antenna or something like that. But just a little fun thing I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks very much if you did. I uh, hope you guys stick around and watch some other stuff. I've been doing a lot of ham video content rec recently, but this channel is, is, I think it's going to be a variety channel overall. So hopefully it doesn't turn anybody off and, and you still enjoy hanging out with me. Thank you very much. I'll answer any comments, uh, questions you have in the comments. And uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks.